All right, welcome to this video. My name is Lintron, and in this video, I'm gonna be talking about flicking the switch. I'm not talking about flicking the switch on the light bulb, I'm actually talking about activating and flicking the switch inside of you. Now, whether it's a conversation I have with a friend, a client, a prospect, a neighbor, there's one thing that seems to happen in common. I talk to people and they have this idea, they have this potential inside of them. They're like, oh my God, I really wanna do something. I'm not doing what I can actually, I know I should be doing. And I think Stephen Pressfield quotes this perfectly. Okay, inside of this book, his book called Turning Pro. It's a small book, changed my life. He talks and he says, every single person lives two lives. I'm paraphrasing, by the way. There's a life that we know we can live to our fullest potential. And then there's the life that we're currently living, which is a shadow of the potential of who we can actually be. And in between life one and life two, our shadow and our fullest self, there's this thing called resistance. The resistance stops us from living our fullest self. And so it started getting me to think because yesterday I had a conversation with my wife. Kerry in 2024, she wants to begin to put herself out there. She wants to begin to explore this business side. She wants to begin to build her personal brand and start like voicing her opinions and start talking about things that she actually cares about, which is, it seems to be a common thing. Everybody seems to have an opinion, right? And everyone wants to start to put it out there to build their personal brand, to build their business, whatever the case is. And so I'm sitting with her and I'm going, well, how, how's it all going? And she's like, look, I'm a little bit stuck. I feel like I'm on the edge. I feel like watching you is giving me a lot of inspiration and, and it's fantastic. And I'm like, Hey, let's figure this out. Like, are you looking for something where, you know, you flick that switch, it's on and like, you're ready to go. She's like, yes, I'm waiting for that moment. I'm waiting for like my switch to go on. And I know that once it's on, I'll, I'll never stop, but it's just getting over that edge. And as I'm sitting here, I'm kind of, I'm thinking about my past, thinking about my journey from 2014, being a 24 year old, having no idea, growing up, immigrant family, being Asian, being young, being shy, uh, being scared to like shame my parents, being being scared to talk about things that aren't outside of the realm that I'm supposed to be talking about. And I'm starting to go, look, I completely get it. Like there's been many times where I've had the, the switch flick on and I've had to flick the switch off and then I've gone, fuck this, the, the switch is back off. How do I get this back on? Like during my retirement, right, from 2020 to 2022, I, I turned off the switch because I wanted to switch off. And then in that moment, I found it so difficult to switch back on. Like, there was so much resistance to actually go, fuck, I'm gonna have to reinvent myself. I'm gonna have to put myself out there. Uh, how do I actually do this whole content thing again? There's so much resistance that I was bottling up inside of my head that I'm like, hey, like, I understand. I, I understand what this means. And so I wanted to kind of draw this up because I had a really good conversation with her and hopefully it'd be able to help you. No matter what, who you are watching this, there is some sort of potential that you have inside of you. There is some sort of voice, there's some sort of message, there's something that you wanna do and you're not doing it. And the reasons why you're not doing it isn't because you don't know what to do. And so I wanna, I wanna, I wanna bring this out and actually like give this drawing a bit of a go. So the whole goal is like, we know that if we can flick this switch inside of you, you will become unstoppable. Like there's just waiting for this moment where it's like, it's fucking on, you're on, you're on fire. Like you're unstoppable, you've got momentum, you've got drive. We're trying to find this level, this this level of fire and kind of flame inside of you, this purpose, this passion, whatever you want to call it. Like you, you're waiting for it to ignite. Here we stand. There's you here and then there's success and then there's the to-do. Like ultimately you here, standing right here, you have to do some shit in order to become successful. Depends on what, what where you wanna go, we'll change the actions of what you actually have to do. If you wanna grow a business, there's certain, certain actions that you have to do to grow a business. If you wanna be an Olympic athlete, there are certain things that you have to do to become an Olympic athlete. But the to-do is the thing that we think we don't know. The reality is, this is all available to us online. The to-do is the, easy fucking, uh, the, the easiest fucking part. Yet inside of our minds, we tell us, we don't know what to do. I don't know what to do. There could be so many things. The crazy part is, you actually do. It's so easy to find this. And even if you didn't know, it would take you a day, two days, maybe a week. Give, it, give, give yourself a month. And I guarantee you will know exactly what to do. The reality is, what you have is this idea that Stephen Pressfield calls resistance. Resistance is also known as fear. Now I'm sitting there with my wife and I'm like, Okay, so like, talk to me about this. What's the resistance? And she's like, well, I don't know what to do. I don't know what, what do you, and I'm like, well, what do you want to do? She's like, I want to talk about this. I want to talk about parenting. I want to talk about motherhood. I want to talk about homeschooling. I want to talk about all these things. I'm like, well, you know what to do. Start talking about it. I said, just start talking about it. Start writing. Okay, and then we, once we discover that the to-do isn't the issue here, the to-do is not the issue. We start to discover that there's a layer of resistance behind it. And I go, okay, let's, let's explore this. There's a resistance. What is the resistance? There's the resistance of fear of failure and fear of success. Okay, we have two fears. We have fear of failure 
and we have fear of success. Fear of failure is like, shit, what if I start publishing some shit and no one listens? What if I look like an idiot? What if like the only people that see you are like my friends, my family, and people will judge me. And those are the people, the closest people to you are the people that judge you. Cause they'll be like, ha ha, look, you gave it a try. You look like a loser. We told you so. You're not that special. Right? And those are the craziest people. They're, they're the ones that we're so scared that will judge us. Cause technically, if you actually process this yourself, you and I aren't really scared of what strangers are going to say. Why? Cause strangers don't have any context to our life. They don't know who we are. They don't know what we do. They don't know what we're about. So we're like, well, fuck. I'm sitting there processing this with Karen. And I'm like, do you care what strangers think? And she's like, nope. So like, what do you, who do you care about? She's like, oh, I care about your family. I care about my friends. I care about the people that know me in the Gold Coast, all these people. And I'm like, okay, well, we have fear of failure. And then on the flip side, it's like, we'll have fear of success. Like what happens if this becomes successful and then people start to go, who the fuck does she think she is? Who is she? Who, like if, if she starts to get the views and the followings and the likes, it's like, who does, who does this little girl think she is? She shouldn't be talking about that. Stay in your own lane. She gets all this hate. Right? And that's when the strangers come on. That's where the experts come on. They start to get, they start to hammer. Like you have this imposter syndrome. Who are you? So we have this idea because fear of failure, fear of success. And the ultimate thing is what we're trying to look at is we're trying to look at this personal flame, this fire inside of us, the switch. And I, what I call this is I call this fucking fire. I'm going to call this blue fire. I know it's not red, but we're going to call it blue fire. And this thing is, is we're trying to stoke the flame. And I said to her, Hey, like, it's okay. You have all this fear. You feel like you're on the cusp. And I said, what you need to do, because this is what all I needed to do, and this is what I understood, innately, we want to rush everything. As humans, we want everything and we want everything to happen now, and it's not happening now, we're like, what the fuck? But I think, as humans, we have to develop and understand that everything good takes time. And what we need to do is we need to just encourage time and keep stoking the flame. And this concept of letting this thing bottle up inside of us, okay, this pressure, this boiling point, this fire inside of us, such that... Once it boils inside of us, this fire overcomes the resistance. And I, I quite often say this to people. I say, hey, like the reasons why you're not taking action is because you just don't have enough fire. You haven't stoked enough fire to overcome the resistance or this fear that you're going to face. It's not that you don't know what to do. You and I know what to do. It's pretty simple to figure out what to do, right? Would you agree? Okay, let's figure out what to do now. The question is, why aren't you doing it? Why aren't I doing it? Why wasn't I doing it for two years? Why aren't I doing shit that I'm doing? At some level, there is this thing where I need fire. And what is fire? Fire could be absolutely anything. Fire could be, meaning, fire could be a chip on my shoulder. Like, I could use a chip on, so like, somebody said something to me, they're like, Lynn, well, Lynn's gonna fail. And I heard it, and I'm like, well, fuck, watch. And that, that's fire, and that's fuel. I'm using fuel and fire, and I'm stoking the flame, right? Because all I'm trying to do is actually just bottle this up to build this. And this is why, like, men are fantastic, because we're, we're just so competitive. We just want to beat other men. We just want to go, hey, like, that, man, that guy talked shit about me, and watch. Right, we have that. I'm only talking from a man's world because I, I don't understand as well the female perspective. So I'm like to carry, hey, like, what do you need to see? What do you need to see to keep stoking the flame such that you'll reach this boiling point where you're like, fuck, the switch is on. You're like, I don't give a shit. What do you need to see? What do you need to hear? What needs to stoke the flame? What's the fuel that we can feed this? And I said, look, like, what do you care about the most? Do you care about ocean looking up to you and going, well, mom, like, why didn't you do anything? Were you just a stay at home mom? Do you need that? Like when Ocean's 13, 14, and she's like, yeah, that's that's gonna be really, really good feel. Like she said, she doesn't wanna look like a loser mom. What, what do you mean you're a loser mom? I think you're the best mom in the world. I, like I've, conceptually, I'm looking at the husband, but I'm still sitting back trying to process this with her. I'm like, well, let's use that as fire. You don't want Ocean being 13, 14, and, and, and she's got friends, and then it's like, oh, this is my mom, and don't worry, she's a bit of a loser. She's just a stay at home mom. She's not, you know, you know, teenagers. And I'm like, well, why don't you use that as fuel? What else can you use as fuel? The biggest thing is like, she's like, oh, I'd love to compete against you. And I'm like, why don't you use that as fuel? And the craziest part, what I started to recognize is that the, the, one of the quickest ways to build this fire is actually to get around other people that have the fire. One of the quickest ways. One of the worst ways, okay, for me was in, is trying to sit there and trying to figure out how to build this fire within myself, right? Trying to read more books, trying to learn more shit, trying to consume more content. Like that doesn't build, doesn't build the fire. There are, level, there are things. There's using, for me personally, I love it when people tell me I can't. Cause then I literally just think about, I will, and I'll, I'll prove them wrong. I love pe proving people wrong. Like that's one of the things, that chip on my shoulder that gives me the feel to, to build that fire, to overcome the resistance. Cause I'm no longer caring about anything else. I love the pressure. Like sometimes I'll get into debt to actually build that fire, to go, fuck, like I need to purchase this thing. I'm going to make this big purchase. I'm going to have the fucking banks coming after me. And then I'm going to use that fire to override all my other fear. Because there's this one big lion chasing me and it's like, oh, all these other fears are tiny, they're, they're tiny and they're small. That's another form of fear. Another form of fear is actually like the competitiveness. I remember back in 2016, I, for the very first time, I joined 
uh, my first mastermind, it was Russell Brunson's Inner Circle. This was 2016, this was earlier on. And so one of the biggest things that gave me a lot of fire was just being able to compete. And it was the first time that he announced like, ah, oh, it was the very first year. He's announcing the two comma, comma club award. He's like, hey, we're gonna be launching this two comma club award. It's the first person to do a million dollars inside their funnel, blah, blah, blah. And I'm like, fuck yeah. I didn't care about making a million dollars. I just wanted the award. So a big thing of mine was like, what's the status amongst your peers? What's the status amongst competition? And so one of the most powerful things for me was like using the chip on my shoulder, like being able to process yourself, being able to understand what drives you, what's your fuel, status around other people, environments, getting inside of other people's games and trying to like gamify it and compete. And then another thing was like, fuck, using this big purchase and actually going, well, you have to do this now, you're putting my back against the wall. And so once you have these three, you almost like, you flick the switch, you flick the switch. Okay, so what I want you to understand is that everyone wants to flick the switch, but they don't have the courage to do it. And what is the courage? Everybody knows that they need courage. What is the courage to flick the switch? Well, the courage to flick the switch meant, meant here in 2016 that I needed to join the mastermind. I needed to have courage to actually go, you know what, this is going to be $25,000 US dollars. I'm going to need to out outlay this capital. I'm going to need to back myself and if it fucking doesn't work. It required a level of courage to, to allow me to put myself in that environment to flick the switch. I needed to make a big purchase. It, I needed to have the courage to make that big purchase to allow me to flick the switch, right? I needed to have the courage to put myself out there to talk and to say, hey, this is, this is what I'm gonna do in order for people to talk shit and go, I don't think you would do it. You need courage. So the whole idea here is that, the whole lesson is that in order to flick the switch, you have to have the courage to do things that will stoke the, stoke the feel and stoke the flame such that you get to a boiling point and then it becomes easy to overcome the resistance. Now I know this looks like a pile of shit right here, but you get the point. So I wanna bring this back to you. If you're watching this, well, you're one of a kind, really. You like what I'm talking about. You find it useful, you find it beneficial. But I wanna relay this back to you. I wanna relay this to how is this actually, go how are you actually going to apply this inside of your life? Well, quite often we tell ourselves a bullshit story. We tell ourselves that we don't know what to do. We don't know like who are we to do this. We have all this fear around fear of failure. We're too small where everybody else is out there and it can be quite, it can be very daunting. But I want you to consider this. I want you to consider that inside of you, there is potential. Inside of you that Stephen Pressfield says, we live two lives. There's a life that you live to your highest fullest and the life, there's the shadow life that you're currently living now. In between those two are resistance. And if there's something that you ever wanted to do, there's a, there's a technique to, to flick that switch. You know you want to turn on that switch. You know you know that if you did turn it on, you'd be unstoppable. Like there's something, you'd fucking be a maniac. You'd be obsessed. You'd like crush it. The problem is you don't have the courage to flick on the switch. You don't have the courage to put yourself, to stoke enough fuel to that fire so that you can overcome the resistance. The resistance is the fear of failure. What if you fail? What if no one sees? What if you push it out? What if it bombs? Blah, blah, blah. What if you do succeed? Fear of success is actually more scary. It's like, what if you do fucking succeed, you make it work, and then now you're wedged into this thing, this identity, this whole business that you wanted to create. It's like this whole fucking big machine and it traps you. At the end of the day, it doesn't matter. The worst part is, if you don't do it, you'll never find out. And you'll sit here with the one biggest regret, which is, the regret of not fulfilling your potential, the regret of being a has-been, the regret of being a person that says, oh, I, I know that person who, who did so well, and then your, your kids ask, well, why the fuck didn't you do anything? What are you doing? The regret when you sit on your ass and you give people advice and you're giving your children advice and they look back and they go, why didn't you do it? And then you just, you feel restrained. So my question to you today, and thank God for, for, for Kerry, and I hope she doesn't share, she won't mind me sharing this, but there is a lesson in every one of us. There's a lesson inside of me. The reasons why I can share this is not because I'm sitting here going, oh, I'm so great. It's because I face this very same resistance, but I'm, I'm understanding myself to, to start to recognize what drives me. What are the things that drive me? What are the things that build my flame to overcome the resistance? What is the thing that can flick the switch on for me so that I can overcome the bullshit stories that I might have because knowing what to do and uh, isn't, isn't the objection. It's, I, I, I know what to do. You know what to do. And if we don't, it, it's very quick to very, find out. I'm gonna leave you with that thought. And the most important thing is, do you have the courage to start trying to find, put yourself in a position where you can stoke your own flame, you can build that fire, you overcome the resistance to do what it is that you need to do. Let me know in the comment section. By the way, if you love these videos, if they actually impact you, please subscribe, like. It helps the algorithms out, helps spread this message. And um, of course, as always, we'll see you in another video in the next video. Bye-bye. Take care for now.